In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a stable live keyboard rig using Ableton that will allow you to be in complete control of your sounds, have constant stability, and allow you to expand and add on sounds at any time you need. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of Ableton Live with building a stable live keyboard rig and with mastering sound design. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so in today's tutorial, we're gonna be building what I like to call a dynamic patch list. And this is what I love to use because everything is manual. A sound gets turned on or off with a button. Um, I'm handling everything, there's no automation. Um, and the reason I like this is because I like to think of myself as the primary instrument here. And these things, these are all tools, um, which can be really helpful in creating sound, but I don't want my computer making choices for me. I wanna be physically in control of everything. A dynamic patch list has like a global mentality, meaning everything um, gets transformed and manipulated in certain key points that we're gonna set up. Now for today, I'm using the Novation Launch Control XL and the Keylab 88. If you like this, I'm gonna leave links below to a place where you can grab uh, a copy of these instruments for yourself if you're interested. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now we're gonna do this um, in a couple of sections. So our first section is gonna be creating MIDI and audio buses. Our second section is gonna be adding our sounds and our third section um, is gonna be mapping MIDI. We're gonna go a little bit longer today, but this is worth it, I promise. This, in my opinion, is the most stable, flexible setup you can build. So right now I've got this blank uh, Ableton set and, and here's the overview, okay? MIDI comes into Ableton, the MIDI is captured, the MIDI is sent to your instruments, the instruments produce sound, that sound is sent to an audio bus where it's manipulated and then it's set out. So we're gonna build that in that order. Step one, we're gonna create our MIDI bus. So I like to rename this MIDI channel, empty MIDI channel, and I call it incoming signal. And that's all this channel is gonna do. It's gonna receive MIDI. So I'll choose MIDI from my keyboard, which is the Keylab 88. We'll make sure monitor is set to input, and when I hit a key, you'll see I've got signal. Now this is one of our manipulation points. So in this channel, I'm also gonna add an arpeggiator. And I'm gonna turn it off. Now do you need to use this arpeggiator? No. But having it here means that at any point you want, you could send this arpeggiator to any sound, right? Pretty cool, that's our global mentality. We're thinking large scale here. So we're still in step one here. We've dealt with MIDI, now we have no sounds yet, but stick with me because we want a way to manipulate these sounds a little bit. And we're gonna do that like this. We're gonna use these audio channels to eventually capture our sounds. So I'm gonna rename this first one here, Keys. And I like to do three channels usually. So keys are gonna be your piano, your e-piano, those types of things. Um, next one's gonna be synths. And that's gonna be, well, I'll rename that pads actually. And that's gonna be your pads. So these are textural sounds. Pads, uh, kind of lower, feel, lower energy synths maybe. Um, strings would go here. Uh, I'm gonna create another track here and I'll call this one leads. And this is gonna be anything that sticks out or takes precedence. This is gonna be your monosynths, your dulcimers, um, anything rhythmic or uh, anything that sits on the higher end. So these are gonna be our manipulation points for audio. Once we've created sound, we're gonna capture them here um, and then we're gonna send them out to the ears so we can hear it. I wanna put at least one sound in here so you can kind of hear uh, what I'm talking about when we set these buses up. So I'm gonna use a crushed giant piano, um, which I really like. Uh, the giant on its own I feel like is fine. Um, the giant when it's really run through a compressor hard and, and kind of driven out is a really beautiful sound. So here's where the magic starts, friends. This is not going to receive MIDI from all instruments. This is gonna receive MIDI from incoming signal. So when I hit a key right now, it's got nothing happening, right? I'm actually gonna turn this to input. Now I hear that sound. If this channel strip gets turned off, nothing happening. So everything is coming through here. Additionally, if I wanted to send an arpeggiator, I would have the ability to do that. So here's my crushed piano, and I like my piano sounds to be brown. It's a kind of a bit of a boring color. I don't know why I chose that. That's what I did though. So here's my brown crushed giant piano. And I've got right now this audio going to the master, but the reason we don't want that is I have no control over that sound. 
So I'm going to send this audio to Keys instead. Now, this is actually a great teaching moment here, right? So you can see green audio here, meaning that sound is happening. But when I get to Keys, because this is only going to my sends, you didn't hear it. So I'll send this to Master so you can hear it. But if this track is off, nothing happens. Additionally, I can change the volume, not just of Crushed Piano, but if I added another piano, perhaps we'll do one of the Pro Piano effects collections. Um, if you wanna grab a copy of any of the Pro Pianos, there is a link below. I'll use Slow Burn here, and we'll do the same. MIDI from, incoming signal. MIDI to, keys. So, go ahead and mute this for now. So here's my Slow Burn piano. And I can change the volume. I can change the volume of both simultaneously, right? Now that's really cool. Some cool stuff is happening, but we're actually gonna go further. So under this keys channel strip, we wanna have the ability to make uh, some changes. So I really like to add first to my chain reverb. Now this reverb is not just on one piano, it's on any piano that I want it to be on. So if I am playing, my crushed uh, giant. I have the ability to verb this out. I actually think I maybe have a better preset here. Yeah, we'll do this one. I've got a tutorial on how to make this reverb. I'll link up the card. Right, so I can apply it to this piano. I can also apply it to this one. So no matter what I'm playing, I have the ability to alter that sound. Now, additionally, I always like to have a filter. So I'll just use the auto filter here, drag it in. That's gonna give me this type of ability. And we'll add a bit of resonance. Um, and then last but not least, I use auto pan for this. Um, this is sort of a cheap way to get that side chain compression effect. So I'll choose this triangle. Flip it backwards and we'll make sure it's sunk to the eighth note or a quarter note or whatever it is that you want. I like the eighth note. And then when I control the amount, I get that sort of pulsing thing, right? So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna group these together by hitting Command G. And I'm gonna map the most important controls to my macros. So here's my dry wet. Here is my filter frequency. And here is my amount of auto pan. Okay, so now I can control. All of these features from right up. Now I want this on every channel. So we'll hold down option and just drag it into pads. And we'll hold down option and drag it into leads. Okay, so now I've got three of these channel strips that all have uh, the same effect on it. Now, you could do whatever audio effects you want. I just happen to really like this. Now, we're at a, we're at a stopping point right now, right? We've got some stuff set up. So I want you to let me know in the comments below, are you trying to improve your live keyboard setup or is this your first Ableton live keyboard setup? Let me know below. I really do my best to respond to all of the comments. I know it's a pretty bold statement, but if you comment below, I'm gonna do my best to get back to you. So leave me a link, uh, leave me a, a comment below and I'll do my best to uh, to reply here. Now, we've got these set up, right? Which leaves us now with uh, a couple more things we gotta do. So next step is we gotta add some sounds. So I've got two different pianos here, but we wanna add some pads. So uh, I really like the, uh, the soft synth pigments. So I'm gonna put in a soft synth preset that I made using pigments. I'll demo this for a second here. So here is pigments. I just dragged it over, right? Super simple. And here's my preset. So remember how we do this though. This is a new MIDI channel. So MIDI from, incoming signal, audio to, pads, right? So I'm gonna bring these down for now. Okay, there's my sound. This is my one oscillator sound. Now I've got a ton of control over this and I haven't even really done much of anything, right? So I can make it pretty quiet, add some verb. Can add some 
Maybe bring this up to a quarter note. It's a bit aggressive right now. And this depends on your tempo too, right? Everything is relative here. Okay, so I've got this pad rocking here, and I have a lot of control over that and over the volume. Okay, let's do one more pad. Um, now, if you liked that preset there and you want to grab pigments for yourself, I've got a link below. You can grab a copy of that. Let's see here. So we'll do a pad sound here. Now, all of these sounds are actually built off of uh, presets that I found in Mainstage and recreated inside Ableton for Mainstage to Ableton's eCourse. So I'll leave a link where you can check that out as well. So we'll send this fine tapestry pad here to our pad sound. So you can hear that. And we've got our ability to control those frequencies. Um, so I've got two pad sounds now, and I usually like to make my pad sounds blue. It's just good visually, right? But you could do whatever colors you want. All right, let's pick some leads here. So we always need some sort of a mono synth, right? Let's do percussive square lead. Uh, this sound is in the main stage to Ableton E course as well, if you want to grab that. MIDI from incoming signal. If you're starting to understand this, hit that like button. If you're like, this makes sense to me to see what's happening here, go ahead and hit that like button for me. So let's see here. Yeah, this is a great sound. I built this using uh, Wavetable. Wonder if I actually have, yeah, I've got a simpler version of it, so we're gonna swap that out. Why are we swapping it out? It's better on resource. Cool, okay, so we've got that percussive lead. I'll make this black. And we'll do one more lead sound here. Let's do a pluck sound. Cavernous dreams, okay. Make this black. And again, we're setting the MIDI signal here. Input, and we'll send this to lead. So make sure this goes. It's pretty verbed out. There we go. Cool, so we've got two sounds of each. Now this is really easy to add sounds to the setup, right? We just pop them in. Now the reason I'm doing it in this fashion is because Ableton is only using one processing core per channel strip. So you don't wanna have everything in instrument racks. I know a lot of people tell you to set it up that way. I just disagree, but that's okay. We can disagree. This is how I do it. So we've got all of our stuff on different channel strips. Now, you might've noticed I'm doing all of this with a mouse, right? <laughs> Doesn't work when you're playing live, but we're gonna fix that. So here's what I like to do, friends. Again, using the Novation Launch Control XL, link in the description if you wanna grab it. Um, but we're gonna begin to map this controller so that we have control over all of our audio effects, all of our volume, and what turns on and off just using this. Pretty cool. So here goes. We're gonna enter into MIDI mapping mode, Command M. Let's start with what's easy. So we know we've got these three channels, so I'm gonna use the first three channels of my MIDI controller to control volume. One, two, three. Exit MIDI mapping mode. I have control of volume, right? So we'll go ahead and set these up. Here's a pro tip. If you select all of them and you bring the volume up, it'll move them all at the same time. So now we need to be able to control these effects. Now the Novation has three uh, knobs on top. And so what I do is I go reverb, filter, sidechain compression. So super simple. First knob is reverb. Second knob is filter. Third knob is compression. Then we pop over. We're doing the second row now. Reverb, filter, compression. Third row now, reverb, filter, compression. Okay. So let's test it. I'm gonna just put on my pianos. So I've got reverb. Let you see what's happening here. Here's my verb. Okay, here's my filter. And compression. Okay, so I've got total control over this now. I've got all my effects and I've got my overall volume. 
So we've got the same thing happening on pads, but there is one final thing we need to do. If you are still watching, make sure you've hit that like uh, button. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions. What we need to do next is we need to make a way to turn these sounds on and off, okay? Now, two things here. First of all, we'll need instrument racks to do that. And second of all, you're going to need to be sending momentary MIDI messages that are CCs and not notes. If you don't know what that means, I've got a tutorial that will explain that in the comments below. So here's my crush giant. And if we pop into chain, you'll see I've got this blue guy here. So I'm going to see if I can, can I isolate this for you? Well, we'll just turn this one off. So right now, all you're hearing is the crushed giant. And if I move this chain, no sound. So we're going to use that to our advantage. What I'm going to do is enter MIDI mapping mode. And when I hit this button here, you'll see it pops up and selects it. It's sending a MIDI CC and chain selector is here. If I set my minimum to zero and my maximum to one, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a toggle. Okay, and you can see this uh, button here is giving me visual feedback. So I can turn this sound off and on using this button. And I'll show you one more time before I go into fast forward. Let's do it with slow burn. So we're opening up our instrument rack here. We're choosing chain and we're just moving this chain to the second position and choosing a button on your uh, device here and setting the minimum to zero and the maximum to one. We exit out. And now we've got a toggle on both sounds. So, got one, that's my slow burn, pro piano effects. Crushed, here's what it is together. You could really create a wide range of sounds. Right? Pretty cool stuff. Okay. So we've got on and off for there, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this pretty quick, and then uh, I'll come back in a second. Okay, so all of this is mapped, and now we have a fully functional live keyboard set up that you are completely in control of. So here's a, here's a demo. I'm gonna start with piano and pad, and I'm gonna fade my pad in, turn my volume up. Now I'll bring the piano up, Maybe pull some of that filter off, add a bit of verb. Okay, I can maybe open the filter a little bit if I want. Now if I want to add some more texture, I can bring the other piano in manually. And friends, I'm recording my screen, check this out. 19%, okay, we're doing good here doing good here. Now, if I want to grow this sound, I can very slowly open up the filter of that pad. I can bring my other pad in maybe. Give a little bit more body. Okay, bringing the volume up a bit and you hear that hissing, right? So that means I've got enough support now to begin to bring in a lead. So I can turn that on without hearing it, right? I'll slide this volume up now. this power and I can start to bring this down as well if I fade this uh, filter off and I'll bring the filter down now as I start to bring down the volume of that synth there maybe pull the reverb up a bit pull the filter down maybe back off on the volume maybe add a touch of I can pull the volume back on both of these now so using this method yes do you have to have your hands on this controller more 100% when the band turns left can you follow absolutely do you have a ton of control absolutely you do so this is a really functional setup now, if you're ready to go to like the next step a little bit, I want you to check out how to actually build a good piano sound, which I've got on the screen right now. Um, and in addition to that, if you're really interested in diving deeper, I've got three different ways you can set this up on the screen as well. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and I will see you next time on LiveKeyboardist.com.